Hello, Trailblazers, and welcome again to uh, Entrepreneur Journey. And today I am, a, I don't know even if I have words to say how excited I am to have uh, the next, this, this gentleman with me, uh, Sean Malone. Uh, if you don't know Sean Malone, you're going to get to know him um, on this episode of Entrepreneur Journey. And without further ado, um, I interviewed your business partner, Chris, and that was one of the best um, Entrepreneur Journey videos that um, I can remember, or, or podcast, rather, video and podcast. But I, I was so anticipating you coming on because I know about your energy. I've seen, I watched a lot of your videos and everything else. So I was knowing him and I knowing that you're business partners, I was like, Sean's going to be awesome as well. So um, welcome to the podcast and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first, Doug, I, I just want to say thank you so much for, for the movement that you've built, all the trailblazers that's following you around and have been uh, in your world. I think what you're doing is such a great thing and giving guidance to those coaches and consultants that truly need to win. And that's what it's about, right? It's about impact. It's about winning, right? Because there's a point where you get through money. It doesn't matter anymore. It becomes what's the bigger next thing. And I feel like you're searching and helping others to find that for them is the, the most powerful thing you could ever do. So your podcast is right on point, dude. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm a sales geek. I'll just put it that way. It's simple. Uh, I, I, uh, t a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a loving husband. I'm a cat dad, right? We have two ginormous cats and I love playing disc golf. That's probably the one thing that you, no one knows about me too much. I just competed in my first, like almost professional tournament recently. So, um, and, and, and I'm such a geek for business and, and specifically sales. Uh, as we get kind of into my backstory, I'll share a little bit more about that, but, um, there was a, there was a, po a point, a specific focal point that really kind of catalysted me into, um, wanting to master communications through the vocation of sales and the lost art of prospecting, because I believe those two skill sets, if you can master those or any coach or consultant or trailblazer can master those two things, you can print your tickets. Nice. Nice. I love it. Um, and as, as you were talking, I was looking at your bookshelf in the back. I want to ask you a question about your bookshelf. Uh, Please. That's not on, that I was By all means. The there you um, go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause I feel like I should include it in the questions uh, beforehand. So let's do a little fun thing. And I like to get to know a little bit, the guests a little bit more on a personal level. level. Yes. Yeah, I can't talk today. Um, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Favorite flavor of ice cream is strawberry of sorts. I like it when it's got the actual chunks of strawberry mm. in there too, because you can't just have it just strawberry. It's got to have like the chunks. Even if you put it in a malt, that's even better with that malt mm. stuff. Delicious, man. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, yeah. My wife is a big fan of malts. That's like, that's her like go-to. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, that is like asking me what's my favorite book. Um, <laughs> I, have, I, I love ice cream. You know, I, I, I feel sometimes I feel like I work out to eat ice cream. So. <laughs> it, it's a good reason to work out. I mean, if it works, it works out like that's cool, right? So yeah, cool. um, I don't I don't really know. It's usually one of those ones that has tons of stuff in it. You know, I don't like straight one flavor type of things. I like like ch like chunks of strawberry in it or, or something like that so yeah um, yeah you gotta I'm get old. all 31 you gotta get all those 31 <laughs> baskets flavors right like that's it man <laughs> yep 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 um cool. so you said you're a cat dad tell yeah. us about your cat so I was uh, deathly allergic to cats, um, and I, I, Melissa and I went through. Geez, I don't know how long ago that was. Must have been in 20, 2014, maybe ish. Um, we stumbled upon Ty Lopez. I watched a three hour mm. video from Ty Lopez and we ended up buying his program called the 67 steps where he like, just, he's, he's a wealth of information. That dude is so smart and he's so good at so many things. Um, mass respect for him. And, uh, we went through his course and during the course, one of the things he said is if you want to be 10% happier in your life, have some other form of life around you all the time. And I was like, Whoa, that's a cool lesson. What should we get? And then Melissa and I love to travel. We love the VRBO life. We love like uh, just seeing the world. And we're like, which animal could we get that would be conducive to travel? And we couldn't do a dog because dogs are just a lot more work than cats. And, and we ended up selling like cats. And we're like, well, uh, Sean's allergic to cats. How are we going to deal with this? Started doing some research. And what we found, most people don't know this, is there's two different distinct flavors of cat, right? There's a hair-based cat. 
and then there's a fur based cat. Mm. And I didn't know the difference, but the main difference is the fur based cats. There's only two breeds that are domesticated in North America. It's the Norwegian forest cat and a Maine coon cat. And um, we, as, as I was reading all these details about fur based cats, what I found was fur based cats. So the thing you get allergic to is the stuff in their saliva called dander. So when a cat licks its hair, that dander from their saliva sticks on their, their hair. And then when you rub the cat and you put it in your face, whatever, mm. that's what causes the allergic reaction. And so fur-based cats, um, the dander does not stick to fur. It just sticks to hair. And when I realized that, I was like, oh, we probably could get a cat. So then what I did is I drove across town and into this, this cat shelter. And I was like, do you have any of this breed of cat or that breed? They didn't have any Norwegian forest cats, but they had a Maine Coon. So I took the cat, I picked it up and I just rubbed it in my face <laughs> like that. Because oh right? I wanted to see if I was going to have a reaction because I was like serious about getting a cat. No reaction. And I was like, holy smokes, this is crazy. Like we could do a cat. And so then we, we looked through and we found a breeder in South Carolina. Rest of the story, we, we ended up purchasing um, two baby Maine Coons who the male, we got a male and a female brother, sister, they're silver foxes. They look like um, lynxes, right? They got the little tufts in their ears and big tufts on their paws. Uh, the male is 30 pounds. He's a big cat. So most yeah, I, I was I was going to ask you about that because I've heard about that breed of cat and yep. uh, my stepdaughter is almost obsessed with that breed of cat. Like we didn't believe it, it was something that existed, but she told us it was something that existed. And I was like, there's no way that cat there's a cat that big. That's like the size of a bobcat or larger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the biggest the biggest Maine Coon on record was 41 pounds and our male is about 30. So he's probably kind of like on the top side, but he's he's a big boy. So. Wow. Nice. Nice. So yeah. they're 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 larger than a lot of dogs <laughs> yeah like when uh, it's it's hilarious because dogs will walk by our house all the time and and um they'll be oh, we let them out on the porch and they just kind of sit there and chill um the dogs run away like they're scared yeah it's crazy so wow uh so next question is i saw i you just mentioned disc golf and i saw a post that you did about or not a, yeah about loving disc golf and watching disc golf now tell us because I have friends that play disc golf like recreationally and et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you were wanting to get somebody interested in that sport, what would you tell them? I would just ask questions like, do you like the outdoors? Do you like to go on hikes or walks? And, and, and uh, do you get bored just sitting in a park? Cause I did, right? Like I'm kind of that busy minded, busy body person. And anyone can throw a Frisbee, right? We've all thrown Frisbees since we're like this big. So it's like, mm -hmm. well, if you can just take a Frisbee and then throw it at a target and then walk a little bit, get some exercise and throw it into the basket. Oh my gosh, that's fun. And so that becomes disc golf, right? That's, that's the easiest way to say it is like, it's just a, it's a very recreational friendly sport to anybody. So if you're out of shape or you're in shape or whatever, there's always a level that you can go play. And it's just more about having fun with your friends and, and just kind of getting a chance to be outside because, and, and we actually only picked it up really seriously. I played a couple of times in college, but we, we really picked it up when COVID first came out. We're like, we need to be able to get exercise without being fearful of being around other people. That became the thing that we could do. And it's very low impact. It, it's healthy for your body. You know, like uh, there's a neighbor we have, her name is Shirley. She's 83. And she always used to tell me, she's like, Sean, I asked her because she's in great shape. I was like, how do you get in great shape? She's like, I walk three times a day. And I was like, oh, that's it, right? Because it's low impact on your body. Because I used to do, I was a professional long driver. I was number eight in the world for a couple of years. Uh, wow. I can hit a golf ball really far. Uh, I played D1 baseball, got drafted by three different um, teams. Um, and that's all really high impact on your body. It just mm -hmm. beats you down. Disc golf doesn't. Wow. Yeah, because I was about to say, I love golf. I'm terrible at the sport, but I love it because I just love being outside. And yep. um, even if I have to go find my ball in the woods or fish it out of the pond, um, yeah. I, I love it because it's 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 a recreational and it's a social sport. Um, totally. So I, I think I would like disc golf too. You would you would more than love it because it's way less expensive than regular golf. That's one of the other things I was going right? to say. There is much more of an investment in, in real golf. Especially this, if this, this frisbee, stuff. right? This is a little frisbee disc golf. This is like five, eight bucks. It's like simple, right? You go get yourself one of those and you can go play. Like, that's it. You don't need a tea time. You don't need to pay for it to go to a course or nothing like that. Yeah, it's awesome. That's why I loved basketball growing up because all you need is the ball, yeah. right? You find a court and all you need is the ball. And that's it, man. So nice. perfect. Great question. Yeah, dude. You should go play disc golf. <laughs> I should. Yeah. There's, um, courses, there's courses everywhere, man. Everywhere. So. Yeah, I know I live in the upstate South Carolina. I know there's at least three in our area. 
So, you have some of the best ones in the world. Like last uh, last year, Melissa and I spent two months on the road traveling the East Coast, and we went through South Carolina, and we went to North Carolina, played a bunch of courses over there. They're beautiful, man. Wow. Awesome. wow. I'll have to check them out. Uh, now to your bookshelf. Um, yeah, let's go. What if you were to – I know context is everything with a book, right? Sure. So if you were to give an entrepreneur one book that – push them in the right direction. And I'm trying to give this more context when, when, as I evolve the question, right? Um, let's just say, let's go sales, right? If they were struggling with sales, mm -hmm. is there a book on your bookshelf that you would, would be the first one would be your go-to? Um, the one we're going to write in a, about a two, uh, we're writing one now, nice. but we're the, the next one we're going to write is going to be that book. But if you're looking to just get started into, um, you know, the world of sales and, and like really how to do it well, we got to look at psychology, mm -hmm. right? And so there's very few sales books that, you know, most sales books, in fact, 95% of sales books, all they focus on is the close, the close, the mm -hmm. close and close. Mm -hmm. I have so many statistics on the close and like, I could just bore you to death with it. I'm not going to. Instead, what I'll do is actually grab the one that I have on my desktop right here. This is the one I would highly recommend. Mm. It's called The Persuasion Code, written by Dr. Christoph Morrison. Morin. And uh, what's important about that book is it talks about biases. Now, we all know the biases we talk about in marketing. You've heard scarcity bias. You've heard urgency bias. You've heard these other biases that are out there. Well, in fact, there's 197 biases that every human being exhibits. So when I look at sales, I go psychology first, because if you can understand how people's minds work, then you can formulate your conversation in such a sense that you're speaking through their filters, you're hitting their primal brain, and they're just going to say yes to you. And so what this book does is it breaks down the 197 different biases to six. Wow. There's only there's six meta biases is what they're called. And there's a specific order that if you follow in a flow of a conversation, you'll get to the yes almost every single time. And so nice. we take those six meta biases and then we plug it into whatever selling system that's out there. We win. And in fact, in the back of this book, this book is written in two parts. The first part is all about those meta biases. The second part is this company called Sales Brain created a pretty solid selling system um, that you could apply that to. Now, wow. I don't particularly go to that selling system because I dissected 40 other ones in my past career where I learned kind of the best of the best and I distilled it down to these seven steps. And then I just took the meta biases and I dropped them on the seven steps and that became our system. And that's helped me to close over $130 million in my career. Wow. Wow. So the, the I think the, um, the, the tip there is yes, get that book, but then reach out to Sean if you really want to take it to the next level. <laughs> yeah. <let's go. laughs> um, so now let's get into your journey. Let's talk about you, you had polluted some of your journey yeah. already. So let's talk about kind of give us the cliff notes from like, when you first started your entrepreneur journey to where you are now? Yeah, like most kids, uh, it started when I was in college, right? So I grew up watching my parents. Uh, we, we migrated from South Africa, originally South African, mm -hmm. right? So South African American. And uh, no, no joke intended, but joke intended. Um, and we came through and I watched them work really, really hard with their own little business growing up. And then when college came and went, I came after out of college and there's only one thing I had on my mind. Doug, and I had this question that was burning in my head. How do I make a boatload of money? That's what I wanted to do. Like most people when they come out of college, let's just fix the money game first because that solves a lot of problems, right? It doesn't buy you happiness, but it solves a lot of problems. And so I went to my dad because he had a business and I said, dad, like, I want to make a lot of money. How do I do it? And he goes, Sean, you have three choices. I was like, oh, sweet. I get choices. What are my choices? He said, number one, are you a CEO? And I Oh no, you've frozen for a second. I hope it's not on my end. Can you hear me? Okay. And we're back. We're live. I guess there's going to be some editing. <laughs> there will. Where did I lose, where did I lose you? Um, do you want, so let's I'll start over. Answer, I can start over. Answer your journey. Start your journey. Yeah. Over yeah. So, so when I first, uh, when I first came out of college, I had one question on my mind, Doug, that question was, how do I make a boatload of money? And so like most, I was like, huh, who could I ask that would tell me how to make a boatload of money? 
And so I went to my dad because he had a little import export business. And I said, dad, how do I make a bunch of cash? Cause that's what I want to do. And he said, well, you have three choices. And I was like, yes, I get to choose. And he said, option one, are you a CEO? And at the time I'm 21 years old. I'm like, I don't even know what those initials mean, let alone I'm not one of those things. So no, I'm not a CEO. He goes, okay, number two, are you an entertainer? And I said, well, I can't sing or dance. So that's not me. So that's not it either. <laughs> And he says, well, okay, number three, the last one you got, like, you got to go learn sales. And I was like, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I took a selling job selling commodities like aluminum extrusions, sheet metal, plastic, electronics, things that every business needs, but nobody really cares about. It's all the fundamental stuff. And I sucked. I was so bad. Here's what I mean. So if, if you've been in sales and you haven't succeeded, fear not, there's somebody that's worse than you. His name is Sean, right? When he first, he, he first started 2,400 calls. I had a manufacturer's book with company names, 2,400 calls. How many meetings do you think I booked, Doug? I, I want to, I want to be generous and say 10% of that. <laughs> I booked wow. zero meetings. Wow. Six weeks, 80 cold calls a day, and I never booked an appointment. Horrible, dude. I felt like garbage. I felt like Oscar the Grouch. And um, I almost threw in the white towel. And it wasn't until my dad says, I said, Dad, I, I'm, not, I'm not in the sales thing. Like, I'm going to have to do something else. He's like, don't quit. Go to the library and read a book. That's what he told me. I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm going to go to the <laughs> library. So I go to the library and I found... This book right here, Tom oh. Hopkins, How to Master the Art of Selling Stuff. Look at his picture, right? He's like 76, 77 years old now. He doesn't look like that no more. I've actually had lunch with him. He's amazing. Nice. And, uh, uh, dear, dear, uh, he's a friend of mine. And uh, I started reading that book when I was 21 years old. And I was like, oh, my God, like the light bulb clicks on. And it's like there's a system behind all of this. And I was like, I'm pretty good at school. Like I could probably apply a system. And so I took this book home and I read it and I got to like this chapter seven and there's this little line that I memorized in there. It's like how to set an appointment. It was a part of the book. And I, I went to my next call. I picked up my phone on Monday and I start calling and I call and, and, and in my first appointment, I got on the line with the guy and I'm about to deliver this line and I freeze and the hair stands up on my neck. The sweat beats start coming down and I'm freaking out. I'm like, and I, I just butchered the line. I messed it up totally. But the guy on the other end says to me, Sean, I know what you're trying to do. Come on over Tuesday at 9 a.m. And I was like, so I was like, oh my God, I did it. And I hung up the phone, right? And I was like jump, jumping around my office because I was so pumped. And my boss, his name was Tim. He walks by the office and he's like, what'd you do? Did you just close the deal? And I go, no, but I just set an appointment. And he goes, oh, get out of here. And he like walks off, right? Like, and, but to me, it was such a big win. And that moment in my life when that happened and I got the yes, this just, just amazing amount of emotion flooded through my body was just, oh man, like I get goosies just thinking about it. Um, it because I knew at that moment, I was like, I have to master this because that felt so good. I felt good. I did it well, authentically, genuine, and it worked. And so I was like, cool. And then I started booking a bunch of appointments. And then I got into the sales conversation and guess what? I sucked again. <laughs> and it's like Garrett White always told me, he said, at first, anything you do, you're always going to suck. Then you're going to suck less. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to suck so little, you actually become good. And so I understood the journey and I started learning these selling systems. I read all these books. I probably read over 50 books. I went to about 10 seminars. I hired about three different coaches in sales. And I learned all these different selling systems that are out there. There's a bunch of them. And out of the 40 selling systems, about 40 that I dissected, I distilled them down to these seven things that were, uh, you know, in all of them. And then I arranged them in a, such a, a format that would help me in my, in my world at the time. Now, I was selling to business to government style companies like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, mm -hmm. Boeing, TRW Lucas, like those types of people. And so it was big ticket. Get B2B, B2B to government sales. And so I learned that and I cut where I cut my teeth in selling. And then I, I got pretty good at that. And I started making a bu bunch of money and, and I took all that money as commissions. In fact, I took a company from three to $37 million in less than a year in revenue and made some commission from that, bought my own electronics company, move out to Las Vegas, started with seven employees and a business partner, took my little selling systems, dumped them into this business and it worked again from 250K to 8 million on my own. 
Then my business partner sells the company from behind my back oh. and I fall. Oh, dude, losing seven figures, horrible feeling. And um, it put me in a dark spot. I started drinking heavily here in Las Vegas where I live. I'm so grateful for that looking backwards now because I met my wife through that process. She was the only thing that I ever found. She was like that shining lightning bolt that came down and she was like, yo, you don't have to drink all the time. Like you're good at stuff. Like you don't have to be that dejected guy anymore. And so she kind of spoke life into me and it pulled me out of that space. And I said, what should I do? And she said, go sell something. So I looked around and I took a job selling roofing material of all things, right? It was like, oh, I'll go find a roofing job. And I put my systems into this business and I broke all their sales records in the first 18 months. During that time, I realized, oh my God, I hate roofing people. They're just not my people. So a lesson for me was like, only serve who you love to serve, mm -hmm. right? Like you, I know how much you are just passionate about entrepreneurs and serving those guys. And you do such a wonderful job. Thank you for doing that. Um, and and so, so at that time, I'm like, okay, I'm not in roofing. I quit. And then my wife saw a Facebook ad. This is like seven years ago. And I was like, oh, Facebook ad, like maybe we could use the internet to make a bunch of money. And I didn't know marketing at all, but I knew sales. And this little guy walking along a beach with no shirt on, he's like, I just made all this money online. Okay, I'll bite. Let's go down the rabbit hole and see what happens. Ten and a half thousand dollars later, we've invested into this guy's <laughs> system, right? And um, all I said to myself was, if this thing can bring eyeballs to me, I can probably close deals. And that little system became so effective. We grew, it was a network marketing business. We were selling um, very high grade medical water systems for home use. And uh, we broke every record that company had ever had in the first 13 months. We became one of the highest ranking people in the whole organization. And we built this humongous downline of 2,500 people that had paid us over 10,000. And then an audience around half a million. And now I'm like, wow, this is pretty crazy. It's working. And then all these half a million people come back and they're like, Sean, Melissa, Chris, your sister is right. When I met Chris, we start partnering up on this business was our first kind of business together. He, they, they go, your guys' software sucks. You should fix it. And I turned around and I said, Hey man, that's not our software. That guy over there built it. And they said, we don't care, fix it. <laughs> and so that led us down the path right then. Russell was like, Hey, meet this meet these software developers, you might need to make connections. So we make connection with them. We ended up building a software product. That's what we got that award for. We did 10 million in our first like year with it. Like it was wow. insane. And um, so now we're running a software company and we're these little micro influencers. This is the part where Sean's working 20 plus hours a day, grinding his face off. He's his wife and him are just working. They're in it. Right. And we're just going and going and going. I burned out. In fact, I exhibited 11 of the 12 symptoms of burnout to a level that I've never even heard of anyone else doing to the point so bad that we were driving to Idaho, saw a big oak tree sitting on the side of the road. And I thought to myself, I'm driving like, mm, this probably seems right. Boom into the tree. I didn't do it, but I was that close to doing it. And I stopped and I was in tears and my wife was with me and I, and I, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And in fact, it brings me, oh man, that's a tough place to be. Oof. Um, and and uh, so we went and Russell says, Russell saved my life. You know, Russell and Alex Sharf and I'll tell those guys, I'll speak those guys to the moon because they saved me. They said, Sean, you don't like who you serve and what you're doing is killing your soul. So you need to sell your company. Mm -hmm. And that led us, that led us to an 11 month journey on how do you sell a software company? And it, it sucked. It was, it was so stressful. Uh, like, yeah. There was a place that I don't ever want to go any, and I don't wish anyone to be there. So if you're wearing all these hats, just remember team and system. If you don't have a system to do it, put a system in place. And the most important part of a system you can install in any business for a coach or consultant is something that's very high value, but very low skill. So look at your business and what's high value, low skill, build a system around that, and then put a person on that to run it for you, Right. And, and, and that was the big solution that I took from this whole thing. And so after that, we went down the path of, okay, what are we going to do now? We just sold a software company. And Russell says, what are you good at? And Chris and I look at each other and we're like sales. And so Russell says, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that kind of suck at sales. You should help them, especially in the online space. And we're like, oh, that's awesome. So what do we do? We just called up 40 or 50 of these entrepreneurs and we said, hey, do you, do you like selling? And they all said, Sean, we don't want to sell no more. Okay, cool. So they hired us and we share, here's how to hire on board and train sales teams. And it started fixing the revenue problems. But then they came back and they said, Sean, 
bigger problem. I'm freaking out. I can't sleep at night. I love the sales team that you built me, but I have no way of like filling their calendars. How do we do that? And Chris and I looked at each other. We're like, oh, that's it. That's the thing that every business is probably struggling mm-hmm. with right now. And so we're like, we have a system for that. We've been using it for years and it's crushed like better than anything I've ever seen. And so we just started deploying our system into our high ticket clients. And one by one, they started getting these results that I've never even heard of. And I'm talking about like taking a company doing 600 grand a month to 2 million a month wow. or a little coaching business from 30 K a month to 90 K a month in like three months. Or how about a video marketing agency barely hitting 20 K with a hundred grand in debt all the way now to quarter million dollar a month, still just cranking it. And when we started seeing these results, we're like, dude, we need to serve this to more people. And so we created, we've hired a mastermind coach because we didn't know how to do masterminds. His name's Chris Williams. Love the guy to death. Went down the path, learned how to run a mastermind. And we started running this high ticket mastermind for $25,000 teaching this one little system, like a 96% success rate. Wow. And we're like, this is crazy numbers. <laughs> so Chris and I look at each other and we're like, this is archaic. We were selling it off a piece of paper in a spreadsheet for $25,000. We're like, <laughs> oh, I kind of feel bad about it, but it works. <laughs> and so then we're like, we need a software. Birth, flow chat. That's where we got to. Yep. Nice. Um, and that is very amazing. And I, I'm going to, there is another interview with Chris Baden where we could really dive into flow chat. I'm going to let Sean talk about flow chat as well. I am a avid user and it has helped my business tremendously. Um, so um, I'm going to shout their praises of flow chat from the rooftops. So um, thank you, Doug. Definitely. Oh, we're going to put a link to Flowchat. Yeah, in, yeah. In there's, the, yeah, guys, if, if you guys want to learn more about what Chris and I do, we'll drop a, a quick uh, link where you can just book a call with our team. It's super easy. Um, just and, and there's no obligation on the, on the call. All we do is there's three questions we ask. Number one is, does this solve a problem for you and your business? Yes or no? If no, we just stop. If yes. The second question is, how are we going to use it in your world? Right? And then the third question we answer before we even go forward is, what does success look like for you? And so if, if, if that's where you're at, you're like, Sean, this, you're speaking my language, like come get on a call with us and let our team walk you through the process. Because if it's something for you, you'll know it immediately. And it will be that one thing. When Chris and I started, we had no list. We had no group. We had no ads. We had no money for ads. We were there. We just had flow chat. And between Chris and I, we worked about two hours a day in our software. And then we had about three to four calls a day after that. So that's what we were doing. We did 104,352 in 41 days. Crushed. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, not to change directions, um, but I want, there was something in your story that I want to try and pull a nugget out of if I can. Please. Um, and I don't, I'm a little scared to go there because it's where you started to get a little emotional. Um, so... You were at the time when you were thinking about running into an oak tree, you were making a lot of money, yep. but, right, oh, yeah. but it was the over, yeah. it was the overwhelm, right? It was really taking up your, 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 your life. And just kind of, I, I, if you don't want me to go there, let's not go there. I, but I, I, no, I, look, I'm through it. I'm happy to go back. Okay. Now. okay. Because it's like, it's like a scar now. It's not an open wound anymore. So yeah, we can definitely go there. Because it's just I, still emotional. There, yeah. There's value in there. And I know that a lot of entrepreneurs, will hit that brick wall, have hit that brick wall. Um, and I know hearing your story about how you dealt with that and how you came out of it um, is going to be powerful for them. Um, so I guess what I'm really asking about is what, was there a pivotal moment? I, you may have already said this, but was there a pivotal moment that you, that what changed, what changed the overwhelm? Was it just the, the just kind of dive into that a little bit more. I'm kind of all over the place. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, it's, it's a wonderful question. Um, I've talked about it before. I'll talk about it again. Um, the moment when I pulled off the road and I was in tears and, and, you know, I'm chatting with my wife a bit. That was the moment when she says to me again, I'm so grateful for Melissa because she's saved my life in so many different ways. I, I love her to death. And she goes, she just said it simply, she goes, we need to do something different. And that moment when I had, and, and again, if, if you're that place, if you're the coach or the consultant, that's just feeling overwhelmed, you're wearing 50 hats in your business. You're trying to make the bread so that you can feed your family and you're not sleeping at night and you're struggling with all that stuff. Like I've been there. You're, you've probably been there too, Doug. And it's just, remember the things that are most important to you are the people around you. Number one people, your support mechanism comes from others 
but you have to be open enough to accept the help because if you're not open enough, it's your fault. Mm -hmm. And so find that coach, find that mentor, find that spouse, find that brother or sister, cousin, relative, whoever is that person that can, you can speak to with no filter and they'll just sit there and listen and then start to maybe help you problem solve a little bit. Those are the, that's the, I would say of all of it, that's my wife for me. Right. And I don't know who it is for you. It might be your wife, might be somebody else in your family or something, but find that person and, and build that again. It's always about connection and, and network and, 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 and those people around you that are truly passionate about you succeeding. Lean on them if you're in that place. Yeah. I, I feel very fortunate, much like you said, my wife uh, throughout my entrepreneur journey, even early struggles was my biggest cheerleader, right? Um, and I'm, I don't mean to be a generalist, but um, one thing um, that really strikes me about that is as men, we're, we're more fearless, right? Um, where women, they, they tend to need more of that security um, and, and, and things like that, that when your wife can cheer you on during those times of insecurity, that is just, because she's at her most vulnerable, right? So uh, praise Christina, prop, props Christina. to my wife too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, like, behind, but they always say, right, behind every good man, there's an amazingly mm -hmm. great woman. Like, it's a true statement. And maybe it's not a woman for you and you know, whoever's listening to this. Like, maybe yeah. it's not a woman. Maybe it's a brother or sister or partner or spouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's just like behind every great person, there's an even better person usually. So um, uh, that's, that's kind of what I believe. And then again, going back to the next piece is like, okay, well, how do you do that? right? You got to find the mentor. So, so emotional support, logical support, mm -hmm. think of it in system support. The emotional support is going to come from those closest to you and your family, you, your wife, me, my wife, maybe somebody else, somebody different. Logical support is going to be going to a coach or a mentor like a Russell Brunson or Alex Sharfen or Doug or, you know, whoever is listening to this, find that person that has achieved the thing that you're trying to achieve and say, look, be vulnerable enough to say to that person, I'm really struggling in this area or that area or this, and then this is what I'm feeling and this is where I want to get to. You've already done that. Can you help me get there? That's all you got to ask because then they're going to say, hell yeah, let's go. And then just pay them whatever they ask because it'll be well worth it. Yes. Awesome. Um, I, I felt like I had a follow-up question, but we'll, we'll move on. Um, let's talk about your, your expertise a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, we I interviewed Chris, and that was an awesome interview. Um, and we talked a lot about Flowchat. Um, so I want to, yes, we'll talk about Flowchat in a minute, but I want to dive in because I feel like a lot of what you've talked about is sales, right? You're, you're, you are um, one of the best, in my opinion, at, at, this, at the whole sales thing. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I follow a lot of your content. And one of the things that I saw recently was talking about the three ego states. Yeah. So, um, and how to use those to close more sales. So can you talk about the three ego states and um, yeah. how they work for closing? Sure. So there's, there's three ego states and I can tell stories that will kind of put this, drive this point home. And then at the end, I'll give you the punchline of how to use all this stuff in your world. If you're listening as a coach or as a trailblazer, I should say. Um, so there's the parent state, right? Uh, there's the adult state and then there's the child state. So, um, the, the, in let's, let's break them down. So in the parent state, there's two kind of buckets. You've got the nurturing parent and you've got the critical parent. So role-playing, if you have a little five-year-old son, what is a nurturing parent talking to that son versus a critical parent talking to that son? Hey, little Johnny, can you go wash your hands and get ready for dinner? Nurturing parent, Johnny, go upstairs and wash your hands now. Critical parent. Okay. Difference in tonality verb and how that works. Right. So that's the parent bucket. The adult, think of it as transaction in, transaction out. No emotion, just logic, right? So it's like, hey, the movie starts at five. Are you ready to go? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Let's get in the car. These are the next steps we have to take to get to the movie. Okay, that's the adult conversation. There's no emotion. And then there's the child state, right? There's the adaptive child and the rebellious child. The adaptive child is going to say, yes, mom, yes, dad, I'm ready to go. And the, the rebellious child is going to be like, huh. I'm going over here and doing my own thing, right? So that's the, those are the three states of a sales conversation in all times. And um, so when, when your prospect, most prospects, what role do they take? They take critical or nurture parent. 
And if they're over here at critical and nurturing parent, opposites attract. We all know that. So if we have parent, adult, child, guess what's happening? If your prospect is parent, you're probably going to be in the child just naturally. We don't want to do this. We want the, sh the, the tables to shift. So as a sales professional, what's very, very important, nurturing parent 70% of the time, okay? And then adult to adult 30% of the time. That's the punchline. So when you are selling, be the nurturing parent, being the caring for them. This talks about, so here's where it gets really interesting. What does a nurturing parent talk about in a sales conversation? Well, you're not going to go talk about products, features, benefits, and all the stuff that you've done that's amazing. You're going to talk about that person having problems, issues, anxiety, fear, stress. Hey, what's, you know, like, tell me about your business growth. Where are you trying to take your business? Oh, I'm trying to hit a million dollars. What do you think's holding you back? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this. Oh, geez, that sounds tough. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me more. Oh, give me more specific. You know, how long has that been a problem? What have you tried to do? How, like, what have you, how much does that cost you? These are all nurturing parent questions and you can get to that level of depth in any conversation in about two to five minutes. It's not very hard to do, but you just got to understand the ego state that you got to plan. See, because most sales pros will always stay in that child state. Oh, well, I'm kind of interested in your stuff. It might be a good fit for me. Great. And you run back to your office and you're like, hey, boss, check this out. I put this badass proposal together. It's going to work. These guys are going to buy. That's awesome. And your boss gets all fired up and then the client ghosts you. That sucks. We don't want that, right? Rather than that, having a conversation like you're struggling with this. I solve it every single day. I want to work with you. Do you want to work with me? Yes. I just got an emotional close from you. Let's just figure out the details. Okay, cool. So in order to fix that problem, when you do this, 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 how do you make decisions? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you have a budget for something, something like this? Oh yeah, I do. Okay, cool. That, that, that makes sense. So if we can do it for that amount of money to solve this problem, is that going to, what does it look like in your business in a year from now? Oh my God, Sean, if you can do that, that's awesome. Great. Sign on the dotted line, right? All of a sudden, I never talked about features, benefits, product, anything. Right. I talked about him and the impact in his world or her world. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so I saw another video about storytelling. Um, yeah. Can you talk about the role that storytelling plays in sales? Yeah, it brings depth to conversations. It makes them not dry. Who likes to talk to a brick wall that just spits facts at you? Nobody does, right? Even in this interview, how many stories have I told? Once, in a, <laughs> once upon a time, here's another story. See, I use it. I interject them all the time. Why? Because stories sell. They're so important. And the reason story is so important in, in selling, I'll go back to my story in a second, is that people can grasp onto the story and have their own epiphany moment. And when people can have their own epiphany moment in a story that you're telling about yourself, you've practically just closed the deal. And that's the secret. So I remember one particular time when I went to Russell Brunson's, one of his presentations in the inner circle meetings, and um, somebody was talking about storytelling came up and I thought to myself, man, I'm going to, I'm going to count how many stories Russell tells in this next like hour presentation, just as a, as a game for myself. And I counted that he told like almost 50 stories. They're only micro, like 30 second to one minute long stories. Some of them are 10 minutes. And at the end I walked up and I was like, Hey, Russell, curious, how many stories do you think you just told in that last hour? He goes, I don't know, three, five. I was like, you told like 46. He was wow. like, what? <laughs> yeah. That's why story selling is so valuable and so important. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, and I just think about this interview and when you talked about your wife, that brought my epiphany story about my wife. Okay. So th there, there it is in action just in this interview, um, how, it, how it relates yeah. to someone that you're talking to. That's it. So that, that is question. awesome. Um, yeah. So now... First of all, I want to say thank you for such a great interview so far. Now, let's talk about flow chat um, for the people yeah. that because some people won't well, for some odd reason won't watch Chris's interview. <laughs> and they'll just see this one. Um, so let's let's talk about flow chat and what a difference it can make in someone's business, especially a coaching and consulting business. Yeah. So depending on where you're like flow chat is scalable. That's the nice thing about it. Um, it does really three fundamental things. Number one, it allows you to go to any, because it's a social media tool specifically for direct messaging. If anyone didn't get that, the reason we chose direct messaging is very simple. There's practically four methods of connecting with potential clients. We all know cold email over here on this side. We all know cold calling on this side. 
So what happens when you receive a cold email? Most of the time, you don't know who through who it is. You just hit the round trash can button and the, tra and, the, and the email goes to trash, okay? So on the other end of the spectrum, when you get a cold call, you probably don't even answer it anymore. I don't. I love it. Now it says spam risk on my phone. I'm like, oh, I'm not even going to pick that up, right? And then you have in the middle of email and phone, you've got direct messages and you've got text messages. Both have high open rates, both have way better you know, percentages than the others. But here's the difference. If somebody text messages you, yeah, you're probably going to just be like, unless it's a really persuasive message, you're probably just going to not respond. But the DMs, the reason DMs are so effective, the reason that 83% of small and middle-sized businesses use direct messaging to sell with is because if somebody sends you a direct message cold and it's an interesting kind of interesting, doesn't even have to be that great of a message, what do you do? You don't just discard it. You click on their profile and you go read all their stuff and you stalk them a little bit, which is that's what social's for. And you're like, yes, this could be a good connection. You accept and you reply. So the response rate to direct messages is higher from a fundamental like um, uh, uh, like the stuff in the conversation part than any of the other methods. So we chose direct messaging for that reason. And then we're like, okay, now we're in the direct messaging space. Um, what is Flowchat? What does it do? So we can go to any social channel. So right now we've got Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Discord, and Telegram working in our platform. And say you play on Facebook, you could go to any Facebook group and collect all the members out of that group. Say you sell plumbing services or, or say you're coaching, let's do, um, let's do uh, systems coaching as, a, as an example. Say you coach other people and help them put systems in their world. Well, what do these people also need? Well, maybe they need uh, branding. So you could go to a branding group, become a part of a branding group for business to business, click a button, collect all the people interested in branding, bring them into Flowchat. That's the first thing it does. The second thing Flowchat does, you write a predefined message sequence that's very genuine, authentic. You store it in the software. And the third thing is we just send the messages. That's it. Very simple, but so efficient. And so we find the right people that are interested in brand. You bring them in here. You say, hey, I, I see that we're in a branding group together. I'm curious, do you ever struggle with the systems in the back end of your business? Oh my God, I totally do. Cool, come join this group. Or, hey, let's jump on a quick connection call. Or, hey, go watch this webinar. Or check out my YouTube channel. Whatever call to action you want, that's what we write in the messages. And then you just fire messages. And it's like a Trello board or an Asana. You just click step, click step. Think of them like a flow chat. Inside of flow chat, we have these things called pipelines. So we collect leads from social. We put them in the tool. We put these people into a pipeline. And then the pipeline, like a one-way street, one-way conversation that's actually meaningful, will get people to go all the way down here and take the action. And then when we take the action, that's when deals occur. And it's the most genuine, most efficient way. Because let's be real, if you're playing in the DMs and you're relying on the unread and read features, Facebook just took that away. If you're managing this on a spreadsheet, how much of a pain in the ass is it for most people? Most people just don't want to do it. And earlier, as I, as I mentioned, what's high value but low skill? Prospecting. I believe the reason that most entrepreneurs do not prospect is because they get bored, period. Okay? Because your mind and my mind are high value. When we're going to go do a low skill thing, like redundantly sending a message to get somebody to book a call, that's boring for us. Mm -hmm. So why do we do it? Well, because it's an essential in every business, but we want a system in place like Flowchat is the system. And then you put the low skill labor on top of the system to execute. And that's what Flowchat allows you to do. It allows you to get white space back on your calendar. Number one, it allows you to book more deals or calls or anything that you've ever want. Number two, it grows your business. Number three, but number four, probably the most important is it calms the anxiety and it gives you the peace of mind so you can sleep well at night because I know when I go to bed, I wake up tomorrow, my system's firing and I don't have to worry about where my next deal is going to come from. And so if you're looking for that light switch style of here's you flick, you flick it on, you're going to have a full calendar. You flick it off, no, no more calls, right? Maybe you're busy. That's how Flowchat operates. Yeah, and I will mention that they have several tiers that, that you can come in at. You, they, if you wanted a professionally trained VA, they do that for you that handles Flowchat. Um, so uh, 
there's and, and and there's a coaching level too, right? Where you get coaching on. Yeah, on there's there's really uh, and again we let people self select, but we we always love suitability. So the three questions we ask, as I mentioned again, number one, does this solve a problem for you? Number two, how and where are we going to use it in your business? And then number three, what does success look like? Those are the questions that we answer. But um, the the different levels, right? If you're already doing this play and you're reaching out to people through the DMs, great, congratulations! It's the most effective pound for pound. You're killing it right? So if you're already doing the play, then maybe like our basic bucket's going to be the right fit. Cause these are the people that already know they're doing it and they just need the tool to like super, you know, put it on steroids. Okay. Second group is going to be that group of people like Sean, what you're saying is gold. Thank you for having this conversation, but I don't know what to write in that predefined messaging sequence. That's why we give a coaching program. That's actually 40 weeks long, plus a membership to the software. So we have a second bucket, which is our like, uh, it's called the growth package. And that will give you me and Chris twice a week, diving into your world, helping you write the messaging, making sure that it's tuned up, dialed in exactly what you need to get the results you're looking for. And we do it in a group setting because other people are going to have other questions. It might be questions you didn't think of, or even you had the same questions. So it becomes very, very, very effective. If we just sold that coaching program on our own, it would be 25, 50 grand, but now you're getting the whole thing for less than five, like insane, right? For a whole yeah, year. Yeah. And then lastly is our pro package. If you're the agency owner and you're like, man, I wish I had a software tool that I could deliver to my clients to help them grow their business. Well, we actually have a white label feature that's available where you can make the software your own version of it and you can offer it to your own clients, right? And then we just manage the tech and give you the top level support so you can support your clients. And so we, we like I mentioned, Flowchat's extremely scalable. It's been 20 plus years in the making of this product. And I believe it's got legs to run. It's, it's moving faster than anything I've ever seen. We've almost done a million dollars in the past like seven, eight months, and we just launched it. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's crushing. I'm, I'm glad I'm getting in near the uh, early end of it because uh, it is doing wonders for me. Uh, yes. One thing I, I wanted to bring up is, you know, I, I use the software on a daily basis. Um, and one of the messages that came back to me is cold. It, it, and I just want to laugh out loud. It said cold DMing sucks. And sure. um, some people, for, it's not for everybody. Right. But I don't, I think a lot of times it's because they don't understand how to do the messaging. Right. Um, Absolutely. And, I mean, and it's exactly. all about, you know, e some people email is not their thing. They don't want a daily email. Some people don't want to see ads. They just hate certain types of marketing. So um, it, it was just funny. I said, but I here's why I like the DMing portion is because it's the fastest way to build a relationship. And it's more relationship than you can get with an email or with an ad. So I'm all about relationships and DMing is where it's at. That's what we believe too. And we're, yeah. we're, you know, we speak from the same cloth, brother. That's, that's what it's about, dude. I mean, I, I pound for pound, we tested, right? So there's five methods, the organic here, let's make mm -hmm. some posts and see who come our way. Right. Second method challenge, second, third method, summit, fourth method, paid ads, fifth method, our system. And the race was out of those five, which would create a hundred thousand dollars in profit, the fastest profit, not revenue, but profit direct or where we posted organic posting, right? We did that for six months. We posted five pieces of content on 10 different channels. We did two grand in revenue, not a good fit, right? So that method didn't work for us. And we'd hired a, cha a challenge coach, spent over 20 grand to build a challenge, all the money on ads and everything else to get people to the challenge. And next thing you know, we, I think we made like five grand out of the big game. Mm. We didn't even break even. It's terrible, right? So um, next one, we tried a summit. We had Russell as the headliner, Myron Golden of Steve Larson, a bunch of big names that y'all know. They spoke on our summit, right? That cost us 40 grand plus another 10 and a half in, in ads. We broke even on that one. Wow. Built a little list of 2,500. And then we were like, okay, so we didn't even get to 100 there. Then we tried paid ads. Took us six months to figure out how to run paid ads first and foremost, because it's like a language on its own. Mm -hmm. and it's either you're doing it for yourself or you're managing an agency to do it. And then, or secondly, is like, once you get that, you're like, you gotta have to build creative that actually converts. And that's the other big thing. Mm -hmm. So it took us 34 attempts to build creative that worked six months to learn the language. And then it produced a hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Cause we spent 44 K to on the ads, we made a hundred. So we actually netted about 56 didn't net a hundred. Then we turned on flow chat and we did $104,000 in profit in 41 days. So there, there you go. There you go. Click on the link, do a demo. Come on. <laughs>
Come on. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So thank you so much, Sean. Um, any parting words for our audience? Um, I just uh, words of encouragement, right? Like if if you're building a business on your own and and you need support, hire Doug first. Um, secondly, uh, you know, know that you can do it, right? I'm just like you. I just had a little more experience than you might have had in the sales game, right? And so you, if, if you're in the space, you can do it. Just keep keep slugging forward. 1% a day, you'll get better. You, you'll get to your results. Just don't stop, right? The people that stop are the people that fail, right? Very, very true. Um, one other thing I want to mention, because a lot of what I digested from your content came from YouTube. So I want to plug your YouTube channel. Um, is it just youtube.com slash flowchat? Yeah, so it's youtube.com forward slash C for because you have to have the channel, right? Forward right. slash C forward slash flow chat. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll put that in the show notes too. There'll be like five, yeah. six links in, the, in But the most important one is if you don't have flow chat, go check out flow chat. Yeah, for sure. You know, our YouTube channel does a different couple of different things. We show tutorials about the software, but more so than that, we teach people to sell at a very high level. So if you want the selling tip, like just a daily like dose of Here's the one sales strategy you think about for today. That's what you're going to find from me. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop them. I'm happy to respond. Awesome. Uh, once again, thank you again, Sean. And Trailblazers, I appreciate you so much. I love you being uh, a part of the Entrepreneur Journey community. It is such a great tribe. And until next time, keep moving forward. Bye for now.